Hello and welcome to yet another video. Today we have a Prime B550 Plus from ASUS and this board came to me for no boot. Don't know what is wrong with this. The owner did not give any particular information about what could be wrong, just that it doesn't boot. Doesn't Don't know on which boot LED it was stuck or anything. Um, I can already see that the BIOS battery has been replaced. So someone tried that already. The first thing that you should do is probably to take some measurements, but I think we're going to skip that part, instantly going to over to build this board up, see how it behaves, how the current consumption is, and go on from there. And now we have our board built up. Now we're going to see its power consumption in standby mode, which is 160 milliamps, which looks normal for something that has some LEDs here on the side. And now you need to pay attention to these boot LEDs on the right. We have, um, this time they're in different order. The top one is boot, the next one is VGA, then we have CPU and then DRAM. Very interesting this time. Okay, let's see then. I'm going to start a board up. Okay. And we're stuck on DRAM right now and nothing happening with 1.8 amps of current draw. My tester also, my tester stands on CPU that the CPU isn't recognized. And I would expect the ver if it's the very first LED, I would also expect it to be the CPU. CPU is just getting a little bit warm. So the CPU is not recognized. Um, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to swap out the CPU and going to try a different CPU in here. So let's power this off. Currently there was a 2200G in there. Let's try with the 2600 and then go a little bit newer with the 3500X if that doesn't work. So this now is the 2600X or 2600, something like that. And let's see, we have a little bit higher of current consumption at almost two amps, uh, but we still have no post calls running. So actually nothing happening at all. Let's turn this off once more. Let's put this in and let's um, get the CMOS battery out. Let's see if we can get anything done with that. Let's just get it out for now and try to turn it on. We have a little bit of higher cu uh, current consumption now of a little bit over two amps, but we still have no change. So nothing moving, nothing happening. Next thing that I would want to do is to actually turn this off and we're going to reset the BIOS with clear RTC. There's a header at the very bottom down here somewhere that you can't see, but I'm shorting those pins out. What you can also do is you can instantly just short the two pins of the battery. As you can see with my tweezers down there that I'm doing right now and just hold them for some time. What also helps is to press the power button a couple of times just to be sure that everything's drained and that the BIOS has been reset. And now I'm going to turn this on again. Same power consumption, hit the power button and we're still a little bit over two amps but we still have no recognition of the CPU. Okay, so one more thing that I can try regarding that is to put in the 3500X that I have and see if it reacts to the 3000 series any differently. And now we have the 3500X in here. Let's turn this on. And yet again, we have no movement at all. Nothing happening. Still stuck on DRAM. I don't think that this is, this is a DRAM issue. I think this is actually a CPU recognition issue. Um, but just in case, because it actually shows uh, DRAM, we're going to, so um, let's swap the positions. I'm going to go in the end there. I'm going to put our tester in here. And that's now, now let's see. I need to turn the power supply on. And we're still stuck on DRAM with absolutely nothing happening. Okay, um, the first thing I would expect when you have a DRAM or the CPU isn't recognized and no postcodes are happening, 
would be to look for knocked off components, especially in the area around the CPU socket, around the mounting holes for the CPU cooler and around the mounting holes for the main board itself. So that is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go under the microscope and have a look. And now after a few minutes, I think it took me like five or six minutes, I found something and I think we have the culprit. What we have is a resistor that got broken in half, as you can see here. And this resistor is very close to our BIOS chip, which is on the left here, which would very well explain why I had not a single postcode go on our on our postcode analyzer that we I have in DDR slots. Because the postcodes actually only start to run as soon as the BIOS is initialized and the self-tests start. So and I also had nothing on this TPM header because I used this TPM header to plug in the PCIe test card. So this could be the problem why it didn't work. It might not be. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this trace actually goes to the TPM header and then goes further into the BIOS. So we're going to be needing a board view for this and we need to see what this resistor is. Very often around TPM there are zero ohm resistors, so just as a bridge, but I don't think it would make sense in this configuration where you have a resistor here also for this to be a zero ohm, but I'm going to see if I can find a board view for this, uh, for this model and then we're going to see what value this resistor is supposed to be. So I couldn't find a board view for this particular main board, but what I was able to find is a schematic for this board. So on the schematic, it's a little bit harder to find out what resistor we are missing, but we had pretty good uh, points of where we could see. So we had the TPM header and we saw that the line where the broken resistor was, was line 12. So P12 follows this line and goes into the signal TP. T, SPI, MOS, M -O, o S I, And this is the signal that we needed. So I um, copied the signal and pasted it into the board, uh, into the schematic. And what I found was this line right here. This is the one I was looking for. As you can see, 116. And this here it has 35, but M O S I. This is our line. It doesn't even matter if you take one of these two at the top because these have the same resistors. This has one 15 ohm resistor and one 5.1 ohm resistor. So the one that is knocked off in this case is a 5.1 ohm resistor on this line. And now we need to replace it. I currently don't have any 5 ohm resistors on hand, but what I have is a 0 ohm resistor and we're going to try that. I don't think it's going to be a problem because this should be a signal line, so there isn't much current going through that line anyways. So let's do that. And now our board is built back up. We have the 2200G in there right now. We have our DVI connected there through HDMI. We have a USB keyboard. We have our post LA analyzers. We have our power supply. Let's turn that on. And power consumption is the same. And let's see what happens now. Pay particular attention to the postcodes the post LEDs right here. We had the lowest one, which is DRAM stuck on there before. Okay. And now we have postcodes. Very interesting. Now it goes to do, we have VGA, we have a beep. I don't know if you heard that. Let's see, can we get picture? And we have picture. System boot up failure. Okay, um, let's get the SATA SSD onto here and let's see. So the problem right there was probably my postcard that I plugged in into the TPM header, but it actually had a problem with that. Um, it didn't like that when it was plugged in. Let's try this again. Let's turn this on. And we need to also connect the fan for at least a little bit. 
so it doesn't overheat instantly. So fan is on, we have post codes running right now. We have our SATA SSD right here on the right. We have a post beep. The picture turned up. BIOS is updating LED firmware. Interesting. Do not shut down or reset the system to prevent system boot up failure. Oh well, that what we <laughs> I've just <laughs> you've seen me before restart the board while it was doing that. Guess that was a problem. But now, as you can see, we're going into Windows and we're loading right in. And as we can see, we loaded up into Windows. I'm going to proceed to get a graphics card in here, the Vega 64, check that the PCIe lanes are all good. Then I'm going to be installing a, a real CPU cooler onto here. And after installing the CPU cooler, I'm going to also put on 20 gigs of RAM, so four sticks, to be sure that all the RAM slots are working. And then we're going to see each other again as soon as I'm done testing. And now two passes of Linpack Stream have passed without a problem. I'm going to continue to the GPU test. And now Haven has also passed. So we're going to close this up, we're going to quit the application. And also I have now on, I have also Ethernet connected, which also works, as you can see in the bottom right. And with this, this repair comes to an end. The NVMe also was working we have 20 gigs of ram everything works the usb works and yeah what can i say yet another board that has been killed by a knocked off resistor but it was quite easy to find and quite easy to replace so thank you very much for tuning in thank you very much for watching this repair hope you liked the video subscribe to my channel and i hope to see you in the next one bye